Loading up some more Portra 400 for this week. And I'm being so serious when I say I'm not showing my face on camera because my haircut is that bad. It's gonna be like a cartoon character. When I get this haircut situation figured out, then you guys can see. Day three of cherry blossom season properly. Uh, I started shooting the cherry blossoms about two days ago, but didn't decide to record it until last night. So we're a little bit behind, and the sun's already kind of up, so the best light is probably gone for the day. Uh, I'm gonna take a walk through Central Park, see what I can find, and I'm gonna do this probably every day the rest of this week. Today's Tuesday, so best of the light, Tuesday, gone, but we still got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday. So, let's get to it. And I'm gonna need you to continue to excuse my terrible haircut. Should be doing something about it today. trouble with shooting the cherry blossoms in Central Park is that they are in close to full bloom right now but everything else in the park is dead so if you want a nice picture of them I think you have to either isolate them or get some buildings in the background or something else because a lot of the shots that I'm framing up they look nice with the cherry blossoms but the problem is there's just a bunch of dead branches in the background which doesn't look that appealing. So if you can match them up with some interesting buildings or maybe the blue sky, I think it looks really nice. But besides from that, it can be pretty difficult. So that's the main trouble I'm having right now. And the reason that I'm actually doing all this is because I wanna make a series of the seasons of Central Park. And I have one for winter, fall, and summer, but I don't have anything for spring yet. And I think the cherry blossoms would be a great representation of spring. First location, not great, not terrible. I think the foreground was blocking the subject of the lawn that I wanted a little bit. But we'll see. Now, I forgot to mention this, but I wanted to shoot the cherry blossoms on Portra 400. So I guess this is just what I do now. I walk around with two cameras, uh, one around my neck, one in my hand. But I think the nice saturation of Portra 400 will look really nice, especially on some of those classic kind of pink and blue shots. That's the idea, at least. Will it come to fruition? I don't know. If I can expose correctly, maybe. Now I'm up here, but how can I get down there? This sketchy looking hill, I guess. I'm not providing a very good example for the tourists right now. All right, now this is a spot that I was at the other day, but it was pretty shady. A lot more sunlight today. And nobody here.
coming to this spot in the morning is a total hack because that place was flooded with people the other night. Well, it's not good. All right, all is not lost actually. I thought that spot was gonna be super busy, but those people did not hang around. And I think I actually got a couple really nice shots that I was looking for, so that's pretty good. I only got about four or five more shots left on this roll. So I'm gonna try and finish up and then uh, get these developed, move from there. I must say, I've been shooting a lot this morning and as someone who usually spends about a month working on a roll, Shooting an entire roll of Portra 400 in one morning feels like my wallet is literally just bursting into flames. Doesn't feel very good. But, more cherry blossoms. And if anyone else wants to shoot the cherry blossoms in Central Park next year, you really have to get here early because by nine o'clock, there are people taking photos absolutely everywhere. All right, I think I only have one exposure left, so I want to get this one right. Here goes nothing. All right, I just took one final shot with these framing a scene over there. Hopefully it turned out. Now it's time to wrap up this roll and then uh, drop it off. Well, it's Wednesday, 6.26 in the morning. Hopefully you guys can hear me all right. There's a lot of street sounds, but I'm about to go search for these photos once again. Let's get to it. Well, not only is it ridiculously cloudy, it's also very windy and very cold. This is not going to be a great photo morning unless something changes very soon. All right, so after a really crappy morning of just all clouds, no sunrise to be seen, uh, Kendra pointed out to me that the light was actually looking somewhat nice around 8.45, so I kind of rushed from home to Central Park to see what was good. And the lighting, I'm not super sure about. There was kind of a nice cloudy, hazy glow from the sunlight, but at the same time, the sky was really blown out, so I'm not sure how good any of these sky sort of backgrounds are gonna look. But on the bright side, the grass is really dewy and pleasant and has a nice little glow to it. So we will see how those turn out, but I think the sunlight's turning a bit more harsh now. So I'm gonna head back home. All right, well, I'm no longer outside as you guys can see. And I actually decided to do you all a favor and cut out the last four photo sessions I had because the weather was really terrible. My photos weren't good, they weren't doing Central Park any favors, and I'd rather just talk about photos that I like while I archive some negatives that I got back. So let's do that instead. I do want to back up a little bit though. I know I mentioned earlier that I'm trying to get a picture of Central Park for each season that I really like. And the reason I'm doing that is because I spent a while looking for a photography project because I didn't really have anything that I was necessarily working on. But then I realized that's not true and actually I go out to Central Park and take photos there of just trying to capture it all the time and that could be a photo project in its own if I just focused it a little bit and actually put some energy towards a more cohesive idea. So that's why I went with the seasons. It was very simple and it was something that I'd already been documenting and working towards. So that's where I got started with this idea kind of of capturing the cherry blossom season because I wanted to capture spring and I feel like cherry blossoms are a clear distinction between spring and summer for sure. <music> 
if it looks like I'm handling these negatives a little kind of roughly, uh, it's because I am. And I will probably never do anything with these. So yeah, in an effort to photograph spring, I want to, to photograph the cherry blossoms because I feel like those are uniquely spring. I think there's a lot of scenes in Central Park that could be like spring or summer, but if you photograph the cherry blossoms with the landscapes in Central Park, you know that it's happening during a certain time of the year, which I like. And that two to three week duration is another thing that I liked about this project. Because when I'm photographing summer, it kind of feels like I just have all summer to get out there and shoot. And on the flip side, in winter, it's very stressful because it needs to snow to get the kind of wintry scene that I'm looking for. And I also need good light when it snows, and I need it to be good light in kind of the first few hours of the day because otherwise everything is going to turn to slush really quickly and it's not going to look as pretty as it did before. So the two to three week peak cherry blossom season is nice because it has kind of a baked in timeline that's not too stressful but also focuses my efforts towards that thing for a short duration. After holding those really curled up negatives, uh, these Portrait 400 ones feel nice and crisp and flat. Anyways, that's enough talk about taking photos. Now, here's my favorite photos from the past few weeks. So after looking back on all the images that I got, sometimes I just have to stop and think, man, I really suck at photography. But when I actually do what I'm supposed to and everything comes together, the magic of Portrait 400 looks incredible. I think Portrait 400 is just a solid outdoor film stock, but I don't know if it was the perfect film stock for what I was looking to do necessarily. I guess what I had in mind was to capture the nice saturation of the pink cherry blossoms and the blue sky. But because it was so overcast most of the time, I actually never got many film photos that really had those elements. And also Portrait 400 rendered a lot of the light pink cherry blossoms just very white, which I didn't expect. So yeah, I don't know if it was perfect, but like I said, when Portrait 400 works, it really makes the magic come to life. Now I think all the images that I showed are pretty solid, but if I had to pick a favorite that shows up the cherry blossoms, it would probably be this one. I think this photo is just really nice. I think there's some nice leading lines. This kind of pathway that leads you to this runner, the subject of the cherry blossoms. There's also a light post and some rocks in the foreground. In the background, you have the cityscape with the sort of halations and sunrise showing on the building windows, which is really nice, I think. I would have preferred if the cherry blossoms in the scene were pink instead of white, but that's the scene. Like, there's nothing I can do about that. I will say, though, that feelings for photos can change over time, so I think there's a good chance that I like some of these photos more in the future than I do right now. I feel like that's a thing that I kind of do often. But yeah, I'm excited to get these things printed out, hang them up on the wall, and see how they look in that format. But the last thing that I want to talk about is actually my new approach that I brought to this project, and that was shooting with high volume. With this Cherry Blossom assignment, I want to try something that was a bit foreign to me, and that's actually just shooting a lot of photos. If you watch my other videos, you probably heard me say that I shoot really slow, often spending about a month to finish a roll of film. So with this project, I want to be more intentional about working towards something very specifically and actually taking a lot of photos in an effort to get there. So yeah, that's really it. It's not like a big high concept idea. I just wanted to take more photos and even on very precious, precious film. Over the course of two weeks, I ended up taking around 200 digital pictures and around 100 film exposures. And I know that some people are probably laughing at the idea of 300 photos across two cameras in two weeks being considered high volume, but that's just who I am, okay? That's not, that's a lot for me. Anyways, what I learned is that I don't really need to be shooting at a high volume, and I actually think I shoot the way I do for a pretty good reason, because most of the photos that I took uh, over the past few weeks were pretty terrible. I think I only took maybe two or three photos that I took in this more spontaneous fashion, that I actually liked. Most of them were just kind of filler or straight up throwaway photos. On the other hand though, I can't be sure that it was totally useless because maybe those photos were helping me get warmed up and maybe I wouldn't have 
gotten the good photos that I did if I wasn't warmed up with those junk photos that I shot before. So although it didn't quite feel right, there's no way to say for sure, in my opinion right now at least. Regardless, film, especially Portrait 400, is far too expensive to be shooting that kind of volume with any sort of regular frequency. So I will not be doing that in the future, especially because I don't make any money off these photos. <laughs> And as I said, about 200 of those photos were digital and I'll continue to shoot high volume on digital because it's free and I really wanna get better at improving my wide angle compositions because most of them are still pretty trash at the moment. So yeah, that was my project of shooting the cherry blossoms in Central Park this spring. I really enjoyed it. It was nice to have a set in stone project. It was nice to go out and shoot as often as I did in nice spring weather and get some images that I really like that I can be proud of, so that's cool. The last thing that I want to say is that I just created a new Substack newsletter, so if you guys want to get notifications in your inbox when I post a new video, or maybe do something like selling some prints, uh, you guys can subscribe down in the description below, and I'll be in your inbox then. I promise I won't be there too often. Uh, I don't do that much, so you'll probably get maybe like two emails a month. Not that much. Uh, but yeah, if you do that, I really appreciate it. You can subscribe here on YouTube, I really appreciate that too. Thank you guys so much for watching though. Have a great day and I will see you in the next one real soon. All right, I did like three outros. I can hang it on that, right?